Hello, my name is Kit Cabello, one of the co-founders of Veracity and Defiance, and I'm here with... Kelly Straub. All right, now I noticed you have the Vets for uh, Bernie Sanders shirt on. I, too, am also a veteran. Uh, what branch of service were you in? United States Air Force. And how long were you in the, uh, the uh, Air Force for? I was in for four years. Four years? Okay. Now, during your time, did you do uh, any tour in Iraq or go overseas? I did not. I'm not a combat veteran. Um, I separated just before um, Desert Storm. My husband was in, so I separated because we had a young child. Um, but I am um, a veteran for peace. All right. What brings you here to the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia? To come and hear our, have our voices heard, I am a Bernie Sanders supporter. Obviously, I'm Bernie or bust. Um, I think it is a critical juncture in American uh, politics right now that we not continue the corrupt status quo, which is creating uh, senseless wars around the world. We are, um, the military industrial complex is just absolutely out of control. And Trump and uh, Hillary will be um, doubling down um, worse than the status quo on that. And Bernie has um, come and stood up for um, the uh, being, you know, with more reserve, more resolve to um, end these wars rather than um, enrich the people who actually profit and benefit from them. All right, and, and that's one of the things that attracted you to the Bernie Sanders campaign, the fact that he's like for peace and he's uh, not for the military industrial complex? Absolutely. Um, among many other things, I'm an environmentalist. Um, I, I am a progressive, um, a former Republican, a uh, former Democrat. I am now an independent. Um, been there for about six years now. Um, I believe in many of the issues. I'm also a healthcare worker, so is my husband. We are very pro um, universal healthcare. He's an MD, I'm an RN. We are. We know that is a healthcare is a crisis in our country right now, and it needs to be better than than Obamacare. Now, now uh, as a former Republican, how do you feel about the current status with uh, the Republican Party as of now and their current nominee? Well, I don't think Donald Trump is really a Republican. Um, he's not in his life, uh, in his past. He's very much um, embedded with the Clintons. Um, I think that he is. Um, he doesn't have a, he, he has a platform of hate. And when I was in the Republican Party back in the Reagan-Bush days, that was not what the party was about. We were for um, common sense gun control. We were for, you know, fiscal conservatism. I have evolved um, into a progressive in my lifetime, um, but I still think that those values can be, I don't hold those values against people, but Donald Trump is not speaking for, I think, the modern day Republican Party either. I think he is an entity of, an, into his own, he's about Donald Trump. Uh, as of right now, it seems that Hillary Clinton might become the Democratic nominee unless the delegates vote differently tonight. Uh, do you think there's potential for the Libertarian and Green Party uh, candidates to fill in the niche that Bernie Sanders has obviously left and that the Democrats can't fill in? As in, would we are we going to vote for Jill Stein? Jill Stein. Absolutely, I intend to. I intend to. I'm Bernie or bust. Um, I I don't um, hold anything against Bernie. He's doing what he feels he needs to do. He has started, as they've said, he has started a movement. Um, it doesn't live or end with him. You know, he has started it. If he is president, that would be awesome. If Hillary is president, if Trump is president, we will continue. I will vote for Jill Stein. I will not be threatened into voting for anyone, any lesser of two evils. I don't see it that way. I vote my conscience, and my conscience is clear. Now, we're both veterans, and we uh, both served our country uh, during times of war and during time of peace. Uh, how do you feel knowing the fact that the Democratic Party was in cahoots with the Clinton campaign and undermined the Democratic uh, primary process for who, who would be the Democratic nominee? How does that make you feel as a veteran? I feel that if, and, and I'm, you know, people who have lived and served, lived and died for this country, part of that being the right to vote and for that to have been corrupted the way that it was in this Democratic primary, I feel like their whole primary was null and void from the beginning. It had been decided from the outset that Hillary Clinton was to be the nominee, and it is a tragedy for, you know, it's a slap in the face to veterans, a slap in the face to our current military who are serving so that we have our constitutional rights. We have our rights, and they are trampling on them. What would you say to the superdelegates and delegates at the convention center, since they're going to be voting tonight on who the nominee is, what would you say to them in regards to picking a nominee? I would encourage them to really honestly look at the, not only, not only the polling, Pol polls can go up and down, um, but we do see um, some very concerning uh, downward for, for Hillary um, against Trump. And 
if they look at how popular Bernie is and the fact that independents were shut out from this primary, largely shut out, um, that all the uh, voter suppression, the voter roll purging, things that it doesn't necessarily transcend to a general victory for Hillary. And I am very concerned that Donald Trump is going to beat Hillary. I, I honestly believe that he can. I don't think that it is a done deal at all. And I think that Hillary's negatives, the fact that half the country wants her in jail, should give them pause. And if they're really looking for the strongest, best, most popular candidate, despite the primary, which was which was rigged, um, they, they really should be backing Bernie Sanders. Do you think uh, the Clinton administration and the Democratic establishment understand what's actually happening here and the fact that most of the people are against their, their, their chosen nominee? Do you think they understand what's going on or are they so encased in their bubble? Uh, bubble? I think it's probably a bit divided. I think that they realize um, what is going on and they realize how unpopular the candidate is, but they seem for some reason very, very determined to go forward with her and to um, get her into the White House, uh, hook or crook. So they, um, I think that they do realize it and they are just tone deaf and or just um, willing to ignore us. They've not really made the overtures that they need. Actually, they have pretty much, um, you know, slapped us in the face. All right, we all know what's wrong with the potential Trump administration. I've been asking uh, everyone this question when I've been talking to you. What, what would frighten you, besides the, the continuation of wars, what scares you the most or concerns you the most about a potential Cl Clinton administration? Because I don't believe that Hillary is sincere. I don't see a, dot, a lot of daylight between her and Trump in some issues. I think that Hillary um, is willing to pander on many, many issues and come around. But coming around on the issue is, is what you want at the end of the day, right? Whether it's pandering or not. Um, I think that uh, Hillary is actually scares me war, more on the, um, on the war front. I think she is a, a warmonger. I think that she is a regime toppler. She has shown it before. Uh, Obama said his biggest regret was, was, was uh, Libya, and that was her at the helm. I think that that scares me. Domestically, Trump scares me more. Um, for, you know, because I am, you know, pro LGBTQ rights. I am pro, you know, I, I'm not a racist, you know. So there's all that. But at the end of the day, we get the president that we deserve. Thank you so much. This is Kit Cabello, one of the co-hosts of Veracity and Defiance, signing out. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Hey, take care of yourself. All Drink right. water.